Hi there folks, my name is NovaWing24 and welcome to the Nova Wrap, your one-stop location for all your simulation news and goings-on from the week that was. Alrighty, so let's start with some new releases for the week. So, in the FSX world, uh, we've got uh, three new additions to FSX Steam Edition for scenery and fun places for you to fly out of and into. So, uh, we've got uh, three new titles from Sim720 have been released for Steam Edition. So, we've got uh, Carnifron Airport, uh, Augusta Airport, and Catalina Airport. Now, uh, Carnifron and Augusta I have previously done reviews for, so feel free to check those out. I'll pop some links in the description down below for you to check those out if you like. And uh, Catalina, of course, uh, you may see one of those coming up very, very soon. As always, uh, though, you can pick it up as your DLC through uh, the Steam clients. Alrighty, in other simulation releases, so in FSX World we've got the Carinado have produced the PA38, oh sorry, PA31, Navajo has now been produced, a PA38, that was Tomahawk wasn't it? No, the PA31 Navajo is now out, uh, so we've got the usual fully integration as uh, Carinado does with the reality XP gauges and the Flight 1 GTN 750, uh, we've got the full dynamic lighting that we come to expect from the amazing quality of Carinado products as well as all the checklists and all the real world checklists and all the um, some fantastically high quality liveries in there and the great sounds from the Lycoming engines and of course this is now available from your favourite flight sim retailer Alrighty, in other FSX type news. So, this one isn't so much a release announcement. This is an interesting little event that's going to be happening up very, very shortly. So, if you have ever heard of VATSIM, or even if you've never heard of VATSIM, but have always been fascinated with the idea of uh, being controlled and flying through control air sp uh, airspace, and uh, if you do you be able to experience what it's like to be uh, a real-world pilot flying around in air traffic controlled airspace? Well, we're, uh, this year they're offering, uh, VATSIM are doing a Real Ops 2015, and it's going to be at Sydney Airport in Australia. So, uh, the this is proudly sponsored by the Fly Tampa guys, who recently released their latest uh, version of the scenery uh, for Sydney Airport, for Kingsford Smith International. Now, this is going to be held on the 11th of July, uh, between 0400 and 1200 UTC, so to make sure that you check for your local time zone equivalent. And of course, if you do want to book in with this one, I would highly suggest that you uh, log over to the website realops.vatpack.org and uh, signify that you're going to be coming by booking your flight and you get all your information that you'll need for the day and the flight. So, really cool little event if you're into that. Uh, it's something that to look out for and consider joining. All right, and another actually, it's just another slight release news. This, it, this one's more for P3D, but uh, you, some of you may have uh, seen or have heard me talk about some of the great work that uh, Robert James Richardson does for developing models for FSX and for P P3D. Now he has uh, re-released his Meteor F8, one of his uh, great works. Uh, this, this time he's re-released it for P3D 2.5, but he's added a little bit more to it. He's given it tack-powered capability now, so you can now fire the Hispano cannons and uh, launch the unguided rockets that used to be strapped under the wings of uh, the Meteor, you can now do that inside your P3D. So looking forward to muck around with that and seeing what that's like. Uh, so expanding my uh, attack pack capable aircraft in prepared 3D. So something to be looking forward to doing. Alrighty, moving away from flight simulation, uh, all the established things of flight simulation at the moment, so let's have a look at it. We've got a new release that's come on the market, so Vector Thrust has just been released. So this has been in development for, oh, good lord, like, I think about three years, I think, I think if we first sort of um, started hearing inklings of this uh, back in 2000 and uh, 12, 2000, I think it was about, yeah, about 2012 we sort of first started hearing inklings of this title coming out. And now it's been hailed as a spiritual successor to uh, Ace Combat uh, and very much does the whole, you know, um, arcade style gaming of it. Um, you know, I look, you know, the, the arcade style flight simming, it, it can be cool. Like, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the Hawks, um, the Hawks series, well, at least Hawks 1, anyway. Hawks 2 was, yeah, a little forgettable, but Hawks 1 was absolutely amazing. Uh, this one, though, is getting some interesting mixed reviews, so um, I'm intrigued to see what this one's going to be like. So, uh, please, if anybody does have it, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and let me know what your thoughts are on it. As uh, I'm, yeah, it's, it's looking a little mixed from the, uh, from the 
videos and reviews that I'm reading, so I'd be intrigued to find out more about it. Alright, in other simulation news, so for you car mechanic nuts out there, so car mechanic, car mechanic Simulator 2015 has released a new piece of DLC, we've got the Trader Pack is now available. So the Trader Pack adds in three new vehicles as well as uh, two new engines, so uh, a new V8 and a new inline, v, uh, new inline 6 engine as well as uh, giving cross-compatibility with other DLC, with the tuning DLC kit as well. So you can do all sorts of fun stuff to your three new cars. Alright, in a, another little interesting one here. This one's uh, from an, an indie developer. looks pretty cool. Uh, it's called Gravity Core, or a brain-twisting space odyssey. Now, this is this is uh, describes itself as an anti-casual um, brain-twisting space shooter. Uh, so essentially, it's a it's a new take on the idea of you know save the uh, save the universe or save save the the last outstanding um, intelligent life forms uh, from a puzzle game, a combination of puzzle and shooting game. Uh, and you get to do the whole journey accompanied by a psychotic artificial intelligence. Uh, so yeah, it it seems pretty weird but at all the same pretty interesting uh, so check it out uh, it may or may not be your thing but definitely uh, check out the review the uh, the trailer video for that and see if it is something that you might find yourself uh, being intrigued like being frustrated by uh, looking pretty interesting and that is now available on Steam all right, in other in train simulation type release news. So the great guys over at Dovetail they've released uh, two new trains for us to play on the permanent way this week. So we've got the uh, very well. I think it looks. I actually must admit, I think it looks pretty cool. I, I'm not normally into the whole train thing, but this does look pretty cool. The RF16 Shark Nose um, is now out and it looks pretty cool. It comes. Um, it is a couple, has a couple of scenarios come as well, uh, though the scenarios do require you to have a, a separate d DLC, which is the Horseshoe Curve DLC. Uh, though, of course, you can just do it in your normal free play as well. Looking pretty slick. Uh, it's a uh, diesel going back to the, the late 40s, early 50s uh, from the American permanent way. So looks pretty cool. Um, and pretty much everything, well, they're all phased out by the early 70s. So looking pretty interesting. And, and the, of course, the other one they've released is British Rail's GT3 turbine locomotive. Uh, so powered by a gas turbine prototype uh, vehicle uh, engine. Well, for, for those of us who are more aviation related, a basically a uh, turboprop. Uh, so this... Um, um, got a uh, pretty cool little interesting. It's, it's more of an experimental one. Uh, it just sort of gives a chance of to see what is and, and looking pretty cool. It, as I said, it, the real the real one was just ever, only ever prototype, uh, so it is just a fictional livery you get with it. But you know what? It, it's, it's it's an interesting look at the technology that could have been. So yeah, very very interesting. Uh, and this one does come with some uh, scenarios as well, also for that require you to have a different uh, piece of DLC, the Woodhead Route. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the simulation news for this week. But I did want to finally just wrap up on one little thing that I stumbled across this week, and I found very very interesting. Um, it's uh, it's a Kickstarter project called Fly Inside FSX. Now I'll be honest, when I when I first came across this, I thought this was a load of cods wallop. I really did uh, because I thought mm, no, this is just no, just no. But um, no, this guy's actually got some demo videos up there, and he's actually got a fully functional alpha version currently available for you for free for you to access. Uh, so essentially, what he's doing, what Daniel's doing, is he's trying to he's uh, trying to integrate Oculus Rift support into FSX and P3D and their ESP-based platforms. So, and you know what? He's had some reasonable success with it. Um, so, you know, we've all sort of dreamed of the idea of actually being able to, to do this, of actually, you know, having, you know, virtual reality rather than, you know, just you know, using our normal flat screens for our flight simulation experience. But you know what? He's actually gone and done it. So this is pretty damn cool to see. And as I said, like, I was, I was very skeptical to start with, but you know what? It's, it's, it's growing on me. It really is. And it could be something interesting, to, especially once uh, the, the Oculus Rift goes to an actual proper retail version. It could be very, very interesting. 
But of course, uh, if you are interested, uh, feel free to jump over and uh, and of course, if you've got, of course, if you're assuming that you've got access to 3D um, or virtual reality headset hardware, uh, you can grab the free demo um, from his alpha site. I will pop the link down below as well. And uh, if you do want to support it and see it actually finished, uh, then what you can do is you can support him on his Kickstarter. Uh, so he's uh, well on track to his goal, but yeah, definitely might be a project, something to, simple to look into a baby about supporting for him to see the next stage of evolution. And you never know, we may see it coming up in our future simulators as almost like a default thing, which could be cool. Alrighty, folks. Well, that now does wrap up the Nova Wrap for this week. Thanks very much for tuning in. Don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying it and want to see more things happening on the channel. And, of course, as always, if you want to see all the things that I'm up to between videos, you can always follow me and find me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search NovaWing24. Well, folks, thanks very much for tuning in. Take care, safe guys to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.